at a time when we can now assess uh, who did and who didn't say something, at a time when we've got the scientists from the COVID inquiry saying they weren't consulted, Fantam, absolutely not consulted, Witty, there was no consultation, Valence, we didn't know about it till it was announced, and yet Sunak says, we took advice from scientific advisors. At the time when that when there's that contradiction, uh, it's disturbing that the chairman of the Conservative Party on the radio denies that James Cleverly even said that word anywhere in the Commons, and then other sources say that he has apologised for using unparliamentary language. But, uh, you know, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that um, the the MP for Stockton North, Alex Cunningham, doesn't accept the apology after all. The apology in the present form comes with the explanation that what uh, James Cleverly actually said was that the MP was a shit MP, not that he was working uh, or monitoring or looking after or minding a shithole. James Cleverly is an extraordinary individual, a, an army reservist. Uh, like many army river reservists, they, they, they fall into two categories. There is the one category that is uh, extraordinarily committed to what they're doing, and there is the other category that is just sim simply soaking up some sort of culture because they lack it in themselves. I've taught many people from his school, by the way, so uh, he doesn't get he doesn't get this um, attitude from there, and we can only assume he gets it from his army reservist lads and his desperation to um, fit in. And it's not fitting in with the officers, is it? I mean, the officers uh, don't um, don't lower themselves to this level of language. But we've had two examples of it now from Cleverly in the last couple of weeks. Two examples, not one. How many more times is he going to slip? Because that's something that he seems to have uh, picked up from, you know, sort of it, it's, it's squaddy talk in the, uh, uh, around the canteen. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think it's the sort of talk that um, uh, would be encouraged by officers. He doesn't need to fit in with that, but maybe that's how he felt. It, was, um, it made him feel more like a real soldier, putting on the clothes, playing at, uh, at, at posturing on the parade ground. It doesn't make him a real soldier. What makes him a real soldier is commitment and being deployed on real missions. As far as I can see, James Cleverly just spends his time on the parade ground collecting bits of, bits of costume. I mean, he might as well be acting. At least then we'd know what he was doing, and we might have respect for him. I have very, I have respect for people who are reservists. I have respect for the real army, great respect. But I don't have respect for people who posture and pose in military fatigues simply because they want credibility in the House of Commons and then tell us that their hobby is painting little soldiers. I, I entirely approve of painting little soldiers as well, by the way. But it's that combination. And somehow, I don't believe his commitment to these things. That's the problem. His commitment is to his own opinion. And I thought he was one of the better guys. I was wrong. Or is it just that the Home Office makes everybody appalling? No, that's not true either, because Amber Rudd was actually quite good. Amber Rudd is quite human and remains quite human. You may not approve everything Amber Rudd does, but Amber Rudd put Amber Rudd in, in contrast, huge contrast, to Pretty Patel, Suella Braverman, Theresa May. Amber Rudd was only too happy to take the punch for Windrush when she knew it wasn't her responsibility. She knew it was the responsibility of Theresa May, then Prime Minister. But she took it. 
because Amber Rudd, in contrast to all these others, is a person of honour. And that, I think, is the problem. And what we've got now is a wriggling Home Secretary who doesn't quite know who to apologise to or how to apologise because it's not in his nature. And that is rather sad. I'd expected more of him. I live in a permanent state of optimism. But uh, at the moment, I feel disappointed in this man. Deeply disappointed. And... Mm, he's dragging his own reputation plus the reputation of another person's constituency, plus that other person, through the mud. Through the mud. Besmirching somebody's constituency. It goes against everything that is considered acceptable in the House of Commons. It goes against everything that is considered acceptable in real society. And so the, uh, Penny Mordant says, with regard to the charge um, made against the Home Secretary, he denies it, and I believe him. Well, gullibility has no end, does it?